What's up? My name is Royce and welcome to my channel where I talk about all things film and tech. And today my goal is to hopefully clear up some questions regarding the different codecs that the Nikon ZR can shoot in and not really quality wise. I feel like there's been a lot of great tests on YouTube. A lot of great creators have already covered the quality and what you can expect when switching codecs. But I feel like there's still um, a little bit more information that needs to be said regarding file size and the bit rates and kind of more of like the nerdy side of it that gets kind of boring. But I think it's important to know. I think you should know as much as you can know about a camera. So for people who may be on the fence about the camera, people who have the camera and are still just, you know, a little unsure about really what settings to choose. Hopefully this video can clear up some of those questions you may have. So we've talked about how unique the ZR is and because it has so many options and ways to film really sets it apart from a lot of cameras that are out right now. If not <laughs> all of them, especially at the price point, it could shoot red raw. It can shoot N raw. It can shoot pro res raw. You can do pro res HQ and you could do H265 and H264, even though that's kind of more reserved for like the high frame rate options. But honestly, the conclusion I've come to for myself, and I feel like a lot of people online, as great as it is to have all those options, it's actually kind of overwhelming. So for me, what I really started to look at is yes, quality is important, but I also know file size, storage. I do a lot of editing. Uh, for myself, also for my freelance work and everything, storage and how big files are really matter, especially when you're first starting out. You don't have a lot of drives. You don't have all the resources to just store up a whole bunch of big files, no matter how great an image may look. It's really important to start thinking about how you can kind of split the difference. So with all these options, that's why I think it's important to look at all the different file sizes that come with it along with the quality and how you can get the best of both worlds by knowing as much of the information as possible regarding your camera. And the best way to do that usually is to go out with your camera, shoot some test footage, right? So we look over here, I have DaVinci Resolve open. And the reason why I'm using DaVinci Resolve is I feel like one, it's the best in terms of supporting all the codecs, especially it supports ProRes now. And not to say Premiere Pro can't do that. I'm just more familiar with DaVinci. Now Final Cut, I know can handle all this except NRAW as this recording and raw still not natively supported in Final Cut, although there is a workaround, there are plugins that allow you to do it. But right now I feel like DaVinci is just the smoothest way to go. And you see here in DaVinci Resolve, I have six clips open here that I recorded. They're all roughly around the same time. I tried to be as precise as I could. I was a little off, but all these clips are between 35 to 45 seconds long. And they were all shot in the different codecs aside from H.264. And it's just all these clips, it's just me sitting on a rock. So this first clip here is was shot in red raw um, outside. The next one is N raw at the high setting, N raw at, shouldn't have said low, N raw at normal setting. And then ProRes raw, ProRes HQ, H265. And actually, let me rename this real quick because that's not right. And even though these are just short clips, they give us a lot of information on what we can expect on larger projects when we're filming. So if I click on this red clip here, hit the info, you can see 34 seconds, in raw high, 42, in raw normal, 37, ProRes raw, 43, ProRes HQ, 35, H265, 36. So I tried to keep it within the same, my timing was a little bit off, but that's not gonna matter too much in regards to the results that I'm about to show you. So if we go into Finder here, we can see all these same files. And if I click on red, Let's start looking at how big these file sizes are. So for red, we're at 6.48 gigs. For a 34 second clip, we're at six gigs already. So you can already start to imagine how that's going to add up. The more clips you have, the longer those clips are, it's important to start thinking about that stuff. Now we're gonna go to NRAW high, which according to uh, Nikon's actual documentation on the ZR should be roughly the same as red's file size but since it was a little bit longer we're going to see here this is a little bit bigger 7.88 gigs but now if we drop to nraw normal we have 3.5 gigs because you're going to shave off about half of the file size between high and normal and then with prores raw we actually have 10.19 gigs prores raw was 43 so this is a little bit longer than the others but still five six second difference and it's already at 10 gigs prores raw is going to fill up some cards for sure and then when we go to prores hq 6.38 gigs so we're actually around the same all roughly as the red raw and then let's see time wise prores hq 35 red 
was 34. So these were actually really close, slightly off from just being the same file size, which is actually really interesting since we're not shooting in RAW. And then H.265, 137 megabytes, right? You know, this is why people got opinions on H.265. Me, I'm like, do not knock it. All right, you can get a really good image shooting H.265 and you can just see here the storage, the space you're going to save shooting H.265. That's why I will stand 10 toes down. H.265 has its purpose. You just got to know when to use it and how to use it. So just another example, I shot a few B-roll clips that I was going to put together before you see me sitting on the rock just some as some more sample footage. So for this, I shot Red Raw and then End Raw Normal. Flick them all. We see six items comes out to 15.48 gigabytes and they're all quick clips. So nothing too crazy there. But then if we go down here to NRAW normal, again, six clips, 8.12 gigabytes. So almost about half as much shooting red versus that NRAW normal. So if you're going out shooting a project, you know you're gonna have a bunch of B-roll clips along with some interviews. You can better plan for how that's gonna take up space. So if you just go with Red Raw, you know it's a lot. Make sure you have the right size card or you're gonna have multiple cards. Or if you're shooting an NRAW normal, you know you can probably get away with it. Now, knowing that, that's a lot of numbers, right? But what does that actually mean in the grand scheme of things? I had mentioned uh, Nikon's documentation, and this is what I wanna show you guys because I think it's really important to have these numbers in front of you. And I'm gonna include all the links here to this documentation in my description so you guys can see for yourself and start getting an idea because all these numbers are you know, approximations and everything and they're not exact numbers, but you can get an idea of what you can expect file size wise when you're filming so you're not surprised and you could properly prepare for it. All right, so let's start with red 12 bit right here, 6K, 60 frames, highest you can get. You're going to get approximately 3,780 megabits a second. But for me, I mainly shoot 24 frames. So for 6K, 24 frames, that's going to be 1,520 megabits a second. So you can already see here how you're saving space, jumping down to just 24 frames. And we can see the difference if you're shooting 30, 1,900 megabits a second. Now, another option is instead of trying different codecs, if you just really want to shoot red, just stay at 4K because for um, a lot of people, a lot of projects that you're filming, that is okay. That's all you need. And just doing that 4K, 24 frames a second, you're getting 700 megabits a second. So you're greatly reducing the file size there. That's why it's important to start looking at these numbers so you can figure out what you want to shoot, what you actually need. If you don't need to go 6K, don't go 6K, stay at 4K. And if you want 6K, do you need 60? Drop it down to 30 frames or 24 frames. And before I go any further, I know all the megabits a second kind of gets confusing because it's like, all right, is that different from megabytes? If you're not familiar hearing uh, all these like different data rates and everything. So all we need to do to calculate this in megabytes, gigabytes, if you just go over to Google, I just typed in convert megabits into megabytes. And this right here pops up, which is really nice. And let's use that first red uh, 6K 60 frames as an example. So 3,780 megabits equals 472.5 megabytes. So roughly we can expect if we're shooting red raw 6K 60 frames, we're getting 472.5 megabytes a second. So ooh, clear picture on how that can add up. And you can do this with every single number that I'm about to list going down. And if you're someone who's curious about what the actual formula is to calculate this, says right here, divide the digital storage value by eight. So we just would divide 3,780 by eight, which would give us that 472.5 megabytes. And of course, if we wanted to, we can go up here, switch that to gigabyte as well, and just see that number. Now going over to NRAW, I'm actually gonna skip over the high quality because the numbers are gonna be exactly the same as reds. But what gets really interesting, I feel like is not really getting talked about enough. If we go to NRAW normal quality, we start seeing some numbers that I think people should really consider. 6K 60 frames, at the peak, we're getting 1,920 megabits a second. But if we drop all the way down to 6K 24, we're getting 780 megabits a second. This right here, I think could be a really nice sweet spot for a lot of people who still want the ability to shoot raw, get that flexibility, get that quality, the higher quality, but still kind of keep those file sizes down. And again, bring it down even more, you can stay in the 4K area, 4K 24. We're at 370 megabits a second. So now you're you're safe. You're good to go, I feel like, 
at that point. And then if we go to H265, so we're gonna say over here, H265 10 bit, max we could do is 5K or 5.4K 60 frames. We're at 400 megabits a second. So again, going back to knowing when it might be useful to stay in H265 just to save space shooting at 5.4K at 60 frames a second, you're not taking up a lot of room on your card. Drop that down to 5K 24 frames a second, approximately 340 megabits a second. Now you're probably wondering, okay, where's the ProRes information on uh, Nikon's documentation? Well, because Apple's Apple, you gotta go to their documentation, which I have over here and we'll also have in the description for you guys to check out as well. So right here, this is Apple's documentation on ProRes RAW 2023. To my knowledge, this is the most recent. If not, please let me know. To find the data rates, it's actually a little bit confusing because they don't have exact numbers for ProRes RAW. So it says right here, Apple ProRes RAW HQ data rates generally fall between those of Apple ProRes 422 HQ and Apple ProRes 4444. So it's like, all right, cool. Thanks Apple. That doesn't really help me that much until you got to go to their other documentation, which shows the numbers for their ProRes. So it's a lot of jumping around you got to do for them. I'll go back to the top. Apple ProRes, this was in 2022. To my knowledge, again, most recent, let me know if it's not. So this is where we can start figuring out what we can expect when shooting ProRes or ProRes RAW. But for ProRes RAW, remember the max is 6K30. We cannot do 6K60. So let's look at 30 frames right here. 6K30 frames. ProRes 422HQ, go down here. We see 2,121 megabits a second. And then for ProRes 444, 30 frames, 3,182. So whatever's in between, it literally can be any of those numbers. So again, doesn't really help too much. I guess we go by the graph. It looks like it's gonna be closer to what the 4444 number is. So 3,182, so let's say it's 29 to 3,000 or something like that, just to stay towards the end. Let's compare that to Red Raw. Red Raw, 30 frames, 6K, approximately 1,900 megabits a second. So if you're filming ProRes RAW, your file sizes are gonna be larger at 6K30 than they would be if you shot Red Raw 6K30. Unless your workflow requires ProRes or that's just how you like to shoot, you just gotta know that you're going to get larger file sizes than if you shot in the same resolution and frame rate in Red or in RAW. And going back to my clip that I shot in ProRes 422 HQ, in that mode, the highest it can go is the 5.4K which this isn't the same resolution number, but we can, again, guesstimate because that's all we have to work with. With ProRes, 24 frames, we could see 1,178. I know all these numbers, it's a lot, it's overwhelming, but like I said, have it all in my description. Highly recommend if you haven't yet, check out these documents, figure out these numbers. If you have a project coming up or if you just wanna test, test that against all this stuff figure out what is the best workflow for you. Like I said, what's really intriguing me right now is shooting NRAW normal at 6K. And I'm actually shooting this video right now in that mode. And I searched a lot on YouTube because I'm still relatively new to shooting NRAW. And I feel like it's kind of interesting that the normal mode is not really talked about that much. All the samples I've seen, you know, with the Z8 and the Z9 talking about NRAW, and I know NRAW in itself is relatively new, but everything's talking about the high quality mode more than the normal mode. So that's what I'm kind of testing here. And I'll share on my channel here how things go for me if I actually like shooting that. Um, I feel like it might be a good in-between for those who still want to shoot uh, raw footage, um, but not spend the maximum, you know, amount of space on your card. So again, this is all theory, still figuring it out. I'll report back. But yeah, I just wanted to share all this stuff with you guys. Hopefully you hung around this long. If it was boring, I'm sorry, but I just think it's important to know this stuff. But yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. And until next time, I'll catch y'all later.